This is your ultimate stop for everything sports. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Should I say more? From the NFL, MLB, the NBA, to MMA, it's all in here. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Listen now. All right, and welcome to the GSMC Sports Podcast. This episode is brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. And as always, I am your host, Jesse Tapia. All right, it is Friday. It is very wet outside, meaning it is raining all over the place. But we're here, and we're going to get through it. All right, so let me tell you how today's show is going to go. First up, we're going to be talking about yesterday's NBA games, which was Thursdays. Not going to go over the Warriors one because I want to spend a segment talking about them. So we'll talk about their game against the Pacers in one of these segments. Probably the next one coming up. We'll be doing that. Talking about the Pacers too a little bit since they're the ones who played against the Warriors. But more so talking about the Warriors and the fact that maybe their dominance has kind of grown them into not care that much. I guess you could say. So we'll put it all together there. More Conor McGregor. Eh, more UFC news I should say. We're going to recap. The events from yesterday talk about what's going on today, obviously, because Max Holloway pulled out of his fight. So, I mean, it's just one big old cluster out there. We got the Masters going on, so we'll fit that into today's show, today show too. And then anything else going on in the world of sports, all right? So that's how the show's going to go. We're going to make my picks for tonight's games also, so it's going to be a fun one. Let's get into it. First up, we had the Washington Wizards facing off with the Cleveland Cavs, and the Cavs won this one, 119-115. to 115. For the Wizards, you had Markeith Morris with 15 points, 5 rebounds, 4 assists, shot 7-12. Otto Porter had 18 points, 8 rebounds, shot 8 to 13 from the field, did not hit a 3 in this one. John Wall, 28 points, 14 assists, 4 rebounds, shot 10 to 20, 2 of 5 from the 3 point line. Bradley Bill, he had 19 points, 9 rebounds, 8 assists, shot 7 to 15, 4 of 6 from the 3 point line. And then off the bench, you had Mike Scott with 12 points there. For the Cavs, you had Jeff Green with 21 points, shot 8 to 10, 2 of 3 from the 3 point line. He has been playing really well since he got inserted into the starting lineup. You have LeBron playing, or LeBron scoring 33 points, 14 assists, 9 rebounds, shot 12 of 20, 2 of 7 from the three point line. Chetty Osman came back in this one, 8 points, 2 rebounds, 3 assists in his start. Kevin Love had 16 points, 6 rebounds, 3 assists, shot 5 of 10, 4 of 6 from the three point line. Rodney Hood dropped in 11 points and then off the bench. You had Jordan Clarkson with 10 points, shot 5 of 12, didn't hit a 3 in this one. Kyle Korver had 13 points, 3 rebounds, shot 4 of 7. J.R. Smith only had 4 points, and uh, Larry Nash struggled in this one. 3 points, shot 1 of 5, did have 10 rebounds, though. Cavs are looking good right now. Obviously, no secret about it. Looking like they are the best team in the East once again. I was doubting them, and I have continually doubted them all year. But now with Boston out, Philly just I don't think is ready yet for that kind of run. And then we got Toronto where you're not really sure what they're going to end up doing because of the fact that it's Toronto and they can just pretty much collapse on any any given moment. So it's going to be, looks like it's the Cavs, it's the Cavs um, East to lose here. All right, let me look at the standings right now in the East. Obviously, you got Toronto and Boston in one and two. Then you got Cleveland at three. They're a half game up on Philly still. And I think uh, Philly's going to end up playing the Cavs tonight. So that's actually going to be a pretty decent game there. I'm sure the Cavs will still end up winning that one. All right, let's see. Yeah, if, I think if Philly were to win, they jump the Cavs for that three spot. So that's, that's more ideal for Boston there. You got Indiana in fifth. Like I said, I mean, the Cavs, I'm not worried about who they play in the first round. I mean, it's just a matter of... I'm not worried who do they who they play till I guess they get to the finals. Maybe in the Eastern Conference Finals, Toronto gives them a bit of trouble. But even then, so like I said, I mean, and if Cleveland was to drop to the four seed and they were to be facing off with Toronto in the second round, I wouldn't have any second thoughts about it. I'd pick Cleveland easily. If anything, it'd probably be Philly. If Cleveland ends up going to the four seed, Philly versus in the three seed, then it's going to be Cleveland versus Philly in the Eastern Conference Finals, or to be Cle- uh, Cleveland versus Boston if uh, Brad Stevens somehow figures out a way to get past Philly. So, And even then, so I mean, it could even possibly be the Raptors because of the fact that Boston's got, as of right now, they'd be playing the Washington Wizards in the first round, and that's tough. If you're Boston, you don't want to see the Wizards. I've been saying that all week. So even then, so I mean, the Wizards versus the Sixers in the second round could be something very intriguing, possibly, if Philly ends up moving up to the three seed. So we'll see about it. But like I said, for Cleveland, it's just a matter of 
it's their East to lose. Then you end up going to the finals, and you're probably going to lose to the Rockets or Warriors. So, I mean, I guess that's good for them. As far as that being able to keep LeBron there, I'm not really too sure. It's going to be tough. I'm really curious to see where LeBron's going to be ending up. I think New York pulled, um, put up a billboard saying, sign here for LeBron. I really hope New York doesn't think they have an actual chance of getting LeBron. I mean, it's New York, so I guess maybe it's possible because of the fact that like the whole marketing aspect of it, LeBron can make a bunch of money in New York the same way he could in L.A., but I mean, you're not really winning much in New York if you go there. So I highly doubt that even happens. But yeah, I just wanted to mention the fact that right now, the Cavs are playing real good basketball. And it's looking like no one's really going to be able to stop them in the East once again. I mean, this entire year, I've been on the whole bandwagon where, nope, this is it for LeBron. The East is a whole lot better. And it's just everyone on the Celtics is injured. Toronto is just a team you can't trust in the playoffs. Philly's too young. It's just... There's no one that could take it from him. Maybe a team like Indiana can come in and surprise some people, but I highly doubt that happens too. So we'll see about it. But yeah, just my thoughts on that. Let's see. We had the Portland Trailblazers facing off with the Houston Rockets. Houston won this one 96-94. Portland played a pretty decent game considering the fact that no Damian Lillard was in uh Damian Lillard wasn't in this one. All right, let's see. For the Trailblazers, you had Evan Turner with 10 points, three rebounds, three assists, shot four or six, two or two from a three-point line. Joseph Nurkic had 14 points, 11 rebounds, shot 7 to 12. CJ McCollum took 25 shots in this one, only hit 7 of them. Had 16 points, 5 rebounds, 4 assists, shot 2 of 9. And then off the bench, you had Wayne Baldwin with 14 points, 3 assists, shot 6 to 10, 2 of 3 from the 3-point line. For the Rockets, you had Trevor Ariza with 10 points, 1 rebound, 1 assist, shot 4 of 8, 2 of 5 from the 3-point line. Clint Capella had 11 points, 10 rebounds, shot 4 of 6. Chris Paul had 27 points, 5 assists, 4 rebounds, shot 11 and 19, 3 of 8 from the 3-point line. James Harden had 24 points, 7 assists, 6 rebounds, shot 7 of 13, 3 of 6 from the 3-point line there. Just business as usual for the Rockets here. I mean, it's nice that they're starting to play a little bit better than what they were. I mean, obviously they had Harden out for a couple of games and Chris Paul was out a couple of games after that. But you want to be going into the playoffs pretty much playing your best basketball. And I don't think we really need to worry about the Rockets doing that because of the fact that they're such a well-rounded team right now. Let's see, Portland, they're currently the three seed. Yeah, Portland's not going to be giving up that three seed, I don't think, unless they go on a nice little losing skid to end the season. I think they got what? Three game, yeah, they got three games left. They're currently on a two-game losing streak, and they still haven't lost any ground as far as that three seed goes. I mean, they've been two games up on whoever's that four, whoever's been that four seed for a while now, so I don't think they have anything to worry about that. Let's see right now. Actually, we'll get into the latter part of the Western Conference standings as I talk more about these teams. But as for Portland, I mean, you're probably going to be playing the Warriors in the second round. You got to hope that... Uh, let's see, the Warriors, they'd be playing the... Actually, I don't want to talk about the Warriors too much. We'll just get into all that in the next segment. How about that? It's the next up, though. We had the Brooklyn Nets facing off with the Milwaukee Bucks, and this was a bad loss by Milwaukee. They lost to the Nets 111 to 119. For the Nets, you had Joe Harris with 17 points, six assists, four rebounds, shot six of eight, three of five from the three point line. Rondé Hollis Jefferson had 14 points, 11 rebounds, five assists. D'Angelo Russell had 22 points, five assists, shot nine of 16, four of 10 from the three point line. Allen Crabb had 25 points, 7 rebounds, shot 8 of 14, 5 of 10 from the 3-point line. And then off the bench, you had Chris Levert with 13 points, 3 rebounds, shot 5 of 10, 2 of 3 there. Let's see, anyone else do anything noble? Spencer Dinwiddie had 9 points, and then Timothy Mozgov got some uh, minutes in this one. Played 5 minutes, had 6 points in that one. For the Bucks, you had Giannis Antetokounmpo with 19 points, 10 rebounds, 7 assists, shot 7 of 21. Chris Middleton had 31 points, 4 rebounds, 3 assists, shot 9 of 14. John Henson, 12 points, 5 rebounds. Eric Bledsoe had 18 points, 6 assists in this one. And then off the bench, you had Jabari Parker with a nice game here. 13 points, 10 rebounds. Actually, not so nice. Shot the ball pretty poorly. 6 of 21 from the field, 0 of 4 from the 3-point line. This is a game that the Bucks really needed to win here. All right. They're currently the 8th seed. Same record as the Wizards. Wizards lost yesterday. If the Bucks ended up winning, they would have jumped the Wizards for that 7th seed. And it's just Milwaukee. I'm not really sure what's going on with them. Let me see. They're 5-5 five and five in their last 10. Let's see. Philly's 10. The Wizards are 3-7 and seven in their last 10. And it's just... I don't know. Milwaukee just, for some reason, just hasn't been able to take that next step. They're kind of reminding me of the Timberwolves from the last few years with Towns and Wiggins. All right, Everyone's been waiting for them to take the next step, make the playoffs regularly. But it's just a matter of the Bucks. They're going to make the playoffs. That's no doubt. But it's just... They haven't gotten better this season. 
All right. This was supposed to be a big year for them. Everyone's thinking of Giannis as their MVP. Um, before the season started, people were thinking that the Bucks could possibly be a top four team in the East this season. It's just a matter of it hasn't worked out. I mean, Jason Kidd hasn't really worked, didn't work out as a coach. And the new one they got out there, the interim guy, hasn't worked out either. So it's just not looking good for the Bucks right now. And if I'm the Raptors or Celtics, I do want to be playing the Bucks because of the fact that's probably the team that's going to give you the easiest run in the first round. All right. The Heat are probably the best team, are the best team out of the Wizards and Bucks. And I don't know, it's a, that's about matchups, I guess. If I'm the Raptors, I'm not wanting to play the Heat. If I'm the Celtics, I'm not wanting to play the Ra- the Wizards. But I think the Raptors could take the Wizards and the Celtics could take the Heat. So I guess it's just a matter of matchups there. But either way, I do think the Heat are all around the better team from between the Wizards and Bucks and themselves. All right, like I said, bad luck, um, Bucks loss here. Next game up, we had the LA Clippers facing off with the Utah Jazz. And this was a bad loss by the Clippers also. They lost to the Jazz 117 to 95. For the Clippers, you had Tobias Harris with 11 points, 7 rebounds, shot 5 at 12 there. DeAndre Jordan had 8 points, 9 rebounds. Austin Rivers, 19 points. And then off the bench, you had Montrez Harrell with 17 points, 3 rebounds, 2 assists, shot 7 of 11. And Lou Williams shot the ball very poorly in this one. 3 of 12 from the field, 0 of 3 from the 3-point line, 12 points in this one, 3 assists. All right, for the Jazz, you had Derek Favors with 16 points, 3 rebounds. Joe Ingles had 11 points, 9 assists. Rudy Gobert, 15 points, 10 rebounds there. Let's see. Ricky Ruby only played 8 minutes in this one, had 9 points. Donovan Mitchell, 19 points, 5 rebounds, 5 assists. Shot 6 to 15. And then off the bench, you had Jonas Drebko with 13 points, 2 rebounds, shot 5 of 6. And Dante Exum had 10 points, 4 rebounds, 5 assists, shot 4 of 9. Then you had Alec Burks with 13 points in this one. Nice little win by the Jazz. Bad loss by the Clippers, all right? This is pretty much, I guess you could say, all... But writes them off from the making the playoffs in the West. Right now, they're currently two games back of the Timberwolves. And unless the Timberwolves, who have been playing poorly the last 10 games, 4-6 and six in the last 10, lost two in a row. Unless they go on a nice little skid, too, to finish out these last three games, which I highly doubt since they ended up getting uh, Jimmy Butler back, which we're going to be talking about in the next game I bring up. But yeah, like I said, it's just not looking good for the Clippers here, and I just highly doubt that they even make the playoffs. I guess it's better off for them because of the fact that you can have, I think they got, what, two picks in the lottery this year? Possibly. So yeah, that's even that's better for them. I mean, there's no really point in making the playoffs when you're going to get swept by the Rockets. So We'll see what they do this offseason. But as for the Timberwolves, like I said, they faced off with the Denver Nuggets, and Denver got the big win here. They won 196 for the Timberwolves. You had Taj Gibson with 17 points, 14 rebounds, shot 6 of 15. Andrew Wiggins had 9 points in this one, 6 rebounds, shot 4 of 12. Not really a game you'd want from a guy like Andrew Wiggins when it's pretty much playoff implications here. You'd expect him at least to play a little bit better, considering the fact that that little report that came out saying he was unhappy being the third option. I mean, when these big games are coming up, you got to do more than put up nine points on the board. Carl Anthony Towns showed up in this one. He had 26 points, 13 rebounds, 4 assists, shot 10 to 16, 2 of 5 from the three-point line. Jeff Teague had 15 points, 6 assists, shot 6 of 14, didn't hit a 3 in this one. For the Nuggets, you had Paul Millsap with um, 12.7 rebounds, shot 3 of 12, not great there. Will Barton had 14 points, 6 rebounds, 6 assists, shot 6 of 14. Nikola Jokic didn't even um, shoot the ball well here, 6 to 20 from the field, 1 of 6 from the three-point line. Had 16 points, 14 rebounds, 9 assists though. Jamal Murray had 22 points, 2 rebounds, shot 8 of 16. And then off the bench, you had Devin Harris. Veteran presence here, veteran uh, big game. 20 points, 3 rebounds, shot 6 of 11, 5 of 9 from the 3-point line. Jimmy Butler was active for this one, but did not play due to coach's decision. Obviously, um, Tom Thibodeau's probably trying to ease him in there a little bit more, but Jimmy Butler's got to be playing the next game for sure. Let me see. I'm going to have to go and double-check the Nuggets schedule, see who they got for the last three games. I'm going to check the uh, Timberwolves schedule because obviously it's going to be big here. Three games left, teams tied. Timberwolves do hold the tiebreaker there, so that's why they got the eighth seed. Let's see who the Timberwolves got left. They got the Lakers, the Grizzlies, and the Nuggets once again. Also, obviously, that um, last game of the season versus Denver is going to mean something. Let's see who Denver's got for the next two games since we obviously know who they're playing for the final game of the season. They got the Clippers and Trailblazers. It's going to take some big wins here, some big time performances from these Nuggets players in order to get these um, in order to get it to the play- get to the playoffs. Because obviously, like I said, as of right now, I'd have to double check because I know the um, Timberwolves currently hold a tiebreaker. But I'm sure if the Nuggets were to beat the Timberwolves, that means they'd get it. Obviously, since so they've only played like, I don't know. It's curious to see how it goes. Like, I think the Timberwolves, how many times have the Timberwolves beat the Nuggets? I think like twice. I don't know, I have to double check that. But either way, Nuggets got the Clippers and they got the Trailblazers in the next two games. That's going to be real tough. All right. Maybe they got to hope for a team like the Lakers, who the um, Timberwolves are going to be playing soon. 
to knock off the Timberwolves there, but I just it's not looking likely. And like I said, for the Nuggets, I mean, the big game, I think they can, they can beat the Clippers, but it's just the Trailblazers. How are they going to do there? you got to hope that Damian Lillard isn't back for that game in order for them to have the best chance. We'll see about it. But like I said, that Timberwolves-Nuggets game at the end of the season is probably going to be for who gets that AC, which is going to be very exciting. That's on April 11th. Let's see. That is on a... It is on a Wednesday. It is next Wednesday, so we'll see about it. But that's going to wrap it up for this segment. We missed one game from yesterday, the Pacers and Warriors game. We're going to be talking about that in the next segment and pretty much give my thoughts on the, I guess, both teams there. So stay tuned, and we'll be right back. Are you looking for the very best NFL and college football podcast? Then check out the GSMC Football Podcast. Get the latest football news both on and off the field. From the NFL draft to trades to the rumor mill to the NFL combines, they got you covered. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash football dash podcast. Get updates on college rivalries, game day insights, and much, much more. It's football talk the way you want it. This show eats, sleeps, and breathes football. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. Alright, and welcome back to the GSMC Sports Podcast. In that first thing, we basically spent it talking about all the NBA games from yesterday, which was Thursday. Alright, and we didn't talk about all of them. Talked about all of them except for one, okay? I wanted to say one for this thing, so we could talk more in depth about the team and stuff, and that was the Warriors game, okay? They faced off with the Indiana Pacers. The Pacers won this one, 126-106. to for the Warriors, you had Draymond Green, who played 29 minutes in this one, had 9 points, 5 assists, 3 rebounds, shot 3 of 3 from the field. Kevin Durant had 27 points, 7 assists, 5 rebounds, shot 8 of 23, 2 of 10 from the 3-point line. Quinn Cook had 12 points, 6 assists, 3 rebounds, shot 5 of 12, 2 of 5 from the 3-point line. And then you had Klay Thompson with 16 points, 7 rebounds, shot 6 of 16, 4 of 9 from the 3-point line. For the Pacers, you had Thaddeus Young with 16 points, 8 rebounds, 5 assists, shot 7 of 11 from the field. Bowan Bogdanovich had 28 points, 3 rebounds, 2 assists, shot 11 of 13, 6 of 7 from the 3-point line. Miles Turner had 8 points, 3 rebounds, shot 3 of 9, over 4 from the 3-point line. Darren Collison had 15 points, 5 rebounds, 5 assists, shot 6 of 8. And then you had Victor Oladipo with 21 points, 7 assists, 6 rebounds, shot 9 of 17, 3 of 5 from from the 3-point line, all right? And obviously, with the Warriors, they lost, okay? They've been without Steph Curry for a while. But either way, you'd think that Kevin Durant, Klay Thompson, and Draymond Green would still be a very formidable team and a team who should be playing better, all right? In their last 10, they're 5-5. Five and five. Only on a one-game losing streak. I don't even know if that counts as a streak. There's seven games back of the Rockets. Who the Rockets just have pretty much just dominated from start to finish, honestly, in the West. All right. And it's just with the Warriors, my question is, like, what's what's the deal here, okay? You got Steve Kerr after the game talking about how they're not giving enough effort and how they deserve to lose doing uh, playing the way that they did. And I think that it's just a matter of the Warriors are bored, okay? They're just bored. I always think of the Warriors, because there was a soccer team I played for, and this all makes sense when I connect it, so just wait here. So I used to I had the soccer team I played for, okay? And we won and won and won, and it wasn't really close. We kept winning and winning and winning. Eventually, that gets very boring because of the fact that, you know, you're just showing up and you don't have to put in like any like you put in effort the effort that you put in you know the team you're playing against stands no chance okay so eventually the winning does get boring people always say the best thing to do was win yeah that's true but there's a difference when you're winning and winning and winning and there's no true real competition 
And I think that's where the Warriors at, are at right now, okay? And this is all going to make sense. I know the Rockets fans are like, oh, what do you mean there's no competition? We're right here. Like, don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Okay? So with the Warriors, like I said, I just think they got bored, okay? Won the championship three years ago. Lost it the year after that to the Cavs. And then last year, they pretty much, the Cavs stood no chance. All right, Warriors won what? It was 4-1 the series. How did the Cavs even get a win in that series? I have no clue. All right, but either way, like I said, I think the Warriors have just either phoned it in to where they realize, you know what, these teams really don't stand a chance with us. Once the playoff gets here, we'll start trying and all that. And I think you can see that Steve Kerr is starting to get frustrated with it. All right. Steve Kerr, if you remember, when they played the Suns during the regular season, I think I can't remember which exact date it was or anything like that, but there was the game where they were playing the Suns and Steve Kerr pretty much had the players coach. Had them draw out the draw out the timeout plays and all that. Alright. And I guess that was a little fun thing that we saw. And we're like, oh yeah, this is cool. Um but nonetheless, you look back and Steve Kerr, after that game, pretty much said that he thought that he wasn't reaching the players. Alright, that he wasn't getting through to them anymore. And I think we're at that point right now. Okay, I think that's what it is. Steve Kerr isn't getting through to the Warriors anymore. Because you got um you got local writers writing about how it seems like the um it seems like the Warriors are kind of taking a step back, not really putting in a full effort and not Steve Curry isn't losing the team, but it's just a matter of, like I said, he's just not, I guess not getting through to him would be the same thing, but it's just a matter of, I got to double check exactly what the article said, because it all made sense. It's kind of like the Warriors, they're their own worst enemy here, okay? The only thing that keeps the, that can keep the Warriors from making it to the finals and winning it this year is simply them. Because let's put it this way, okay? A Kevin Durant, Steph Curry, Clay, Draymond team. The one that we've saw the last couple of years. All right. Do you honestly think that if they were to put 100% effort and pretty much just go through it, anyone would stand any chance, including this Rockets team? Honestly, do you? Do you truly think that James Harden, Chris Paul, and all the other guys they got there would match up with this Warriors team and knock them out of the playoffs? I don't think so. All right. As well as the Rockets have been playing, it's just the Warriors are a team like we've never seen before. Okay, they're in that stratosphere with atmosphere, whatever you want to call it, with the Showtime Lakers, the 86-87 Celtics, and the 96-97 Bulls, I think it was. Okay, and even for that matter too, the 2000-2001 Lakers, and then I was talking to Tate before this segment, he was telling me about how the 2003-2004 Lakers, I think it was, when they had Carl Malone on that team, were pretty much doing the same thing, dominating, not really taking anything too serious because there was no point to because you're going to win every day, pretty much, and that's how it was throughout the playoffs. You go down a couple of games in the finals, and that's it. You lose. All right. I think it's the year that Shaq got traded after that. And I think that might be where the Warriors are currently headed right now. Okay. Pretty much. What's there to worry about? We're the Warriors. No one's going to be able to beat us. Don't worry about it. We'll be fine. We can go to get down a game in the series and come back, no doubt. We can pretty much go up three games, take it easy in the next game, and then win it the game after that. Okay. And again, this is all mostly just opinion and stuff like um, right here because of the fact that you're never going to have Warriors come out and say, oh, yeah, we're just taking it easy. They're always going to say, oh, we're giving 100% every game because that's the statement you got to give. But, all right, let's put it this way. Let's say they're doing that, kind of phoning it in, not really taking it too serious because what's the point? Honestly, what is? What's the point of going through a whole regular season, trying your hardest when you know the fact that is you're going to make it into the playoffs? You can play about half as hard and still be the top two seed, all right? Because that's pretty much what it's been. This Warriors team this year in the regular season is probably the worst regular season team they've had since Steph Curry, since they won their first title, all right? It's just they haven't been dominating like you'd think. They've been losing games to teams they should be beating, and it just hasn't looked great. And I think now we're at the point where, like I said, it's just a matter of their board. And you got this Rockets team, okay, in the West. Number one seed. 64 and 15, 30 and 9 at home, or actually 30 and 9 on the road, 34 and 6 at home, which is even better. All right, 40 and 9 in their conference, scoring 112, po- nearly 113 points per game, only giving up 104. And I'm actually very surprised looking at the point opponents points per game per, um, thing stat for the Rockets because they're only giving up 104. The Warriors are giving up 107. 
That's pretty high there. Okay, out of the top teams, top eight teams in, currently in the West, the Warriors have the third worst defense. If we're going off of that, all right. The Rockets would have the let's see, Spurs got the best. Then go to the Jazz, Trailblazers, and then the Rockets. So the Rockets got the fourth best defense in the top eight. So about average. And then the Warriors have right there the fourth worst, third worst, whatever I called it. All right. Out of everyone, see the Warriors are giving up 107. So, yeah, the teams that are currently tanking, I mean, the Mavericks and Grizzlies aren't even giving up that many points. So, I don't know. But the Warriors, is just a matter of maybe the thing they could outscore everyone. But, like I said, there is this team in Houston, 64-15. and 15. Let's see how they've done in the last 10. 9-1 and one in the last 10. Harden has missed a couple of games. Paul's has missed a couple of games, and it hasn't mattered. Okay? Like I said, Warriors are 5-5. Five and five. Going into the playoffs, the Rockets are the hottest team. All right? And going into the playoffs... The Warriors obviously going to be the second seed. Probably going to have to be playing a team like the Pelicans or Timberwolves, okay? I'm not so worried about the Pelicans, but let's say that they face off with the Timberwolves where you got Towns, Wiggins, um, and Butler coming back. Taj Gibson, who's a nice little veteran presence. The guy's been a bunch of playoff teams. And off the bench, you got Jamal Crawford. That's going to be a very difficult series for the Warriors, okay? Especially without Steph. Without Steph, I could see them handling the Pelicans no problem. And even then, so it'd be a tough series. It'd probably go maybe five games, possibly six. But with the Timberwolves, without Steph, and let's say the Timberwolves are playing really good basketball in that series, if we're being honest here, that series could go seven games. Okay. Especially with the fact that, like I said, the Warriors have been kind of just bored just because they've been winning all the time. That's a series where I think Minnesota could sneak up on the Warriors and give them a bit of a scare. Would I go as far as saying that the Timberwolves would win that series? I'm not going to go and say that, but I would not be shocked if it happened. All right. Just because of the fact that the Warriors are just disinterested. Winning all the time is boring. You want some competition. The Cavs, I mean, LeBron's been to the Eastern the Finals, what, last eight years? This could be his eighth year, I think it is. But it's not like LeBron every year has a cakewalk. Okay. And that's one thing, too. People say that LeBron K has a cakewalk through the East. How have we not said that the Warriors have had that same thing in the West the last few years? Obviously, you got the Rockets who are playing better now, but the Spurs never really stood a chance against the Warriors. Rockets have never stood a chance. Thunder never stood a chance. All right? The Warriors have always made it to the finals. We've always known it was going to be the Warriors in the finals. We always known the Warriors were going to be the favorites in the finals. How is that not a cakewalk? All right, with the Cavs, at least. I mean, LeBron, when he was in Miami, was going against those Celtics teams that were tough. Like Those series consistently went six, seven games. All right, they had the Pacers who were play who was a tough team to face off with in the Eastern Conference Finals. I guess the last couple of years, yeah, it's been different since he's been back with the Cavs. But it's just a matter of I don't know. This year, it's going to be tough for the Warriors. Like I said, it's going to be a tough series against the Timberwolves. You'll probably get Steph back for that second round. I think they could be the Trailblazers, which is also going to be a tough series there. This Trailblazers team is different from the ones we've seen in the last few years. And then you got the Rockets. All right. The Warriors got to make sure they're on top of everything in order to get past the Rockets. They got to make sure they're playing their best basketball. You can't just sleep through the first two rounds in the playoffs, make it to the Western Conference Finals and think, yeah, we can beat this team because that's not going to happen. All right. I'm saying the Timberwolves have a shot in the first round at knocking off the Warriors without Steph. What do you think the Rockets could do? Okay. Obviously, the Warriors are the better team with Steph Curry out there, but it's just a matter of I really hope they don't sleep rock through these first two rounds because of the fact that if they do, I don't like their chances against the Rockets. All right. And this could be the year where it finally, the Warriors finally lose, if we're being honest here. Okay. If it was going to be any year, it'd definitely be this one. And people are going to be surprised. All right. But like I said, pay attention to what they're doing now. And it's not looking very good there. But yeah, I just want to give my thoughts there. I mean, as far as the Pacers go, I mean, it's a nice little win for them. Be knocking off the Warriors yesterday. Currently the five seed. They're going to be the five seed. It's just a matter of if they're playing the Cleveland Cavaliers, the Philadelphia 76ers. I don't think they have any shot at knocking off the Cavs in the first round. They do have a shot at beating the Sixers, so we'll see about it. But like I said, I just want to give my thoughts on the Warriors there because it is looking kind of bleak there. I mean, maybe, I don't know. All right. Usually with this much, we haven't seen this much dominance. And the way that they've been doing it, we've never seen it before. So we'll see about it. But now yeah, it's going to wrap it up for this segment. Next up. I'm going to talk more about the whole Conor McGregor thing. Just give my just give my opinion, my thoughts on it. That's all we're going to do for that segment, all right? Not going to get into too much about the fights or anything like that. Just going to give my thoughts on everything 
and pretty much go from there. So stay tuned and we'll be right back. Check out the show that's built on the MMA. From the UFC to extreme cage fighting, they got the fights covered. Check out the GSMC MMA podcast. Get the latest news on past or upcoming fights. Join us as we talk to and about some of the biggest names in the MMA, past, present, and future. When it's the fight game, there's just one show to check out. GSMCpodcast.com backslash MMA dash podcast. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit G. GSMCpodcast.com for more info. Welcome back to the GSMC Sports Podcast. So far today, we've talked pretty much just basketball. For the first time, we talked about Thursday's NBA games, recap those, except for the Warriors and Pacers one. I wanted to save that for the second segment, all right? And pretty much just give my thought on the Warriors. Right now, it's looking like Steve Kerr pretty much, I guess, cut at it a little bit, is the team just isn't putting any effort in, all right? And like I said, you remember... When they played the Suns and Steve Kerr let the team coach pretty much call the plays from the timeouts and all that, he wasn't reaching them then. I mean, maybe that's just one of the things here. It's gonna, it's it's gonna be interesting, all right? Because like I said in the last segment, if there was any year that the Warriors lost before the finals in the playoffs, it'd be this year, all right? You're gonna have to go through. You better hope not the Timberwolves. They get to, they get the Pelicans. It's, I guess actually, you know what? I think worst case scenario would be that they get the Pelicans in round one. Because the Pelicans around one are a team that you know you can beat without Steph. You're not really going to have too much trouble there. Okay. And against the Trailblazers, you're going to be getting Steph back. You're not really going to have too much trouble there. The Trailblazers are going to play you tough. And then if you get to the third, the Western Conference Finals, you've pretty much been having a cakewalk. You're going to have to play probably the toughest team you've played in the last... The, probably the, yeah, the best team they played in the last three years, honestly, in this Rockets team. Maybe you can count the Cavs team that they lost to in the Finals, but it's just a matter of... I mean, there's the whole, if Draymond doesn't get suspended for that series, then the Warriors win it, all right? But I think this is this this Rockets team is better than the Cavs team that went, beat them in the finals, I think. It's, and you could debate. Obviously, I know the Cavs won the championship that year, so, I mean, I'd understand if you said the Warriors or the Cavs that year were better than the Rockets this year, but, I mean, come on now, all right? I don't think the Cavs team went 64-15. and 15. But anyways... Yeah, so I just wanted to talk about that. Like I said, I think worst case scenario is they do get the Pelicans round one. They better hope they get the Timberwolves just so they get a little wake-up call there. There's only three games left in the regular season, and like I said, I mean, it's just a matter of the Warriors looking like they're not phoning it in, but it's just you get very tired winning all the time, all right? But now we got the whole Conor McGregor incident, okay? Talked about it yesterday with Tate. Pretty much stomped, talked about it when the story was fresh. Wasn't really sure why Conor McGregor did what he did, which makes still makes absolutely no sense when you found out why he did it. All right, we talked about that. Talked about a couple of the fighters that got injured. And pretty much just gave a basis of it all. And now, pretty much, we do know why McGregor did it. He's helping out one of his buddies. I think the guy's last, he says last name was Lobov, I think it is. He's going to be off the card. So, I guess it was Lobov had a little... You want to call it scuffle, I guess. Little, what's the word? Little confrontation with Khabib and his team, okay? I think the story is either Lobov went up to him to defend Connor or Khabib went up to him with his team. They get into it. It's just Lobov there by himself. So that's why, that now makes sense, I guess, as to why Connor McGregor flies with his guys from whatever country he was in. might have been Ireland. I can't remember exactly. He flies into the into New York, shows up at, at the uh, press conference, the little media day, and goes crazy, all right? And... Let me say this, okay? I was looking through all the UFC writers' tweets, all the analysts, trying to see what their thoughts on it. And, of course, you're going to have the fans replying. And Conor McGregor fans have to be the, probably the loyalist fans in the country, in all of sports, I guess you could say. Because, I mean, they're defending this guy till the end. No doubt about it. All right? They're saying that Conor McGregor is a 
he's a tough guy because of the fact that he went to go defend his buddy in uh, New York. And it's just, it's just crazy to see how you could defend Conor McGregor doing that. But nonetheless, he gets arrested. He turned himself in. I think it was yesterday or the early this morning. He's out now. Got out on a $50,000 bail. And I was talking with Tate before. He was telling me that McGregor got hit with, I think, three misdemeanor assault charges and one felony for mischief. All right. He's going to need to get that felony one dropped because of the fact that I don't think that McGregor is a citizen in this country. So obviously, I think if you, I can't remember, I'm not the best with the legal system or anything like that. I'm just a guy with headphones on talking through a mic. But nonetheless, I think that if you get a felony and you're not a resident or a citizen of the country, then they kick you back to wherever you're from. Originally, I think it is. So he's got to get that dropped. And even if he like does it or whatever, he can still go do a lot of the jail time for that. I do think he's going to end up getting the felony drop just because of the fact that the legal system, I feel, works pretty well for athletes who got money. McGregor's got money, all right? So let's just, he's got all that going on for him. And, I mean, Dana White, obviously, McGregor, and that's one thing, too, we're going to get into a little bit, is how big McGregor's gotten so far in his career. And, like, Dana White's talking, has said that he has no interest in helping Conor McGregor, and that might be tough there for McGregor. But this all, all of this, I feel, is kind of on... Like, I think the UFC is at fault a little bit here. And I might just be nitpicking a bit. But I think that the UFC got to the point where they were letting Conor McGregor be bigger than the sport itself. Okay? And I think that's how we've ended up here. Because McGregor, whether you like to say it or not, he has become bigger than the UFC. Okay? No one has ever made the money that he has, I believe. No one has ever had the, pretty much the popularity that he had. I mean, Ronda Rousey was definitely up there at one point. If anything, she was bigger bigger than McGregor at one point. But it's just now McGregor is pretty much top that. It's 10 times that, honestly. All right. And it's just, I feel like the UFC did poorly here by letting McGregor run the show. I think it was. Okay. I honestly think that's part of it. If UFC and Dana White would have kept McGregor a bit downed, and didn't let him get, I guess, as big as he did. Because it was kind of like, like McGregor hadn't defended his title in over 500 days, I think. Both of them. Okay? They should have stripped him a long time ago rather than letting him hold on to it for so long. Okay? Letting him hold on to the belts for that long without defending it is kind of like, you know what? Like, McGregor's got to think, these guys aren't going to do anything to me. They know that they need me. They know that they won't survive without me, which is completely wrong, but I'm just saying um, pretty much what I think McGregor was probably thinking, right? They've let me sit here for 500 days without even defending these belts. Why even do anything unless they are willing to pay me what I think I'm worth, okay? The guy got, what, 150 mil from the Floyd fight? He wasn't making anywhere near that in any UFC fights, but here he is. You get 150 from one fight with Floyd Mayweather. You're going to be wanting that same 150 or at least near that every time you go out into the octagon. All right, and like I said, the UFC biggest problem I think they had was not stripping McGregor soon enough. All right, letting it get to over 500 days and all that I think is unheard of, honestly. And it's just they let him get too big. The UFC let Conor McGregor get way too big here. Okay, and I mean this has just been quite the week for the UFC. All right, because you had UFC 223. I was talking with Tate, like I said, and he was telling me it's supposed to be one of the biggest cards of the year, one of the best, and now you got two fights, I think, that have been taken off. Tony Ferguson pulled out because of the fact that he had the freak accident where he tripped over a while and tore a ligament in his knee, ligament in his knee on April Fool's, mind you, okay, which is just ridiculous, all right? These guys have been trying to fight each other for so long, and it's just freak accident or injury after injury, and it's just the next one happens on April Fool's Day. I saw it. You heard me talking about it yesterday. I saw it. I was like, there's no way this is real. There's no way that Tony Ferguson is pulling out. This is a joke. He tripped over a wire. Come on now. No way. And it was true. And then you got Max Holloway stepping in. Okay. Who maybe would have had a chance against Khabib. I've seen Khabib fight a few times. And honestly, I don't see anyone really beating that guy ever. But nonetheless, Max Holloway looking like he might have a chance. I don't think he could cut the weight enough weight in time. So they said it was a health issue why he couldn't go through, and they weren't. He wanted to still go, but they said he couldn't. And I can't. I don't think I've seen 
who they have could be fighting on Saturday yet still. But it's just a matter of you got two fights I think it was that were taken off the card. Pretty much can't find a fighter for Khabib. This is kind of worst case, best case scenario at the same time. Kind of like the whole thing I said yesterday, any publicity is good publicity. I think that's what the point where we're at with the UFC. Okay. I'm not sure how this whole week is going to affect pay-per-view buys. I mean, you'd have to think that they address the whole Conor McGregor situation on the pay-per-view, which I guess is more incentive and like is incentive enough to go out and buy it. You still get to watch um the woman's fight. I think was it Rose fighting uh, Joanna Yedrichek still. I think it is. That's still going to be a pretty good fight. Honestly, I think that she's just um whatever fight they give could fighter they um, have fight Khabib. That should be moved to the co-main event and make the Yedrichek fight the main event. I'd rather much rather see that rather than anyone else who could be is going to be fine because whoever he's fine is coming off. I guess just the day notice. All right, but nonetheless. I mean, it's just been a wild week for the UFC. And I don't know. Like, I'm kind of curious to see what comes from this. This is probably the most odd week in the history of the UFC. Isn't it? Tony Ferguson on Monday. I think it was or su- it was Sunday, actually. Tony Ferguson on Sunday. McGregor yesterday, which was on Thursday. Okay. McGregor goes into jail this morning. Now he's out. Just have McGregor go out and fight Khabib. Simple as that. He's in New York. He doesn't have anything to do. Why not just tell Dana White? Anyway, you know what? Come fight him. That would that if the UFC and that's not going to happen or anything like that. I don't think. But if the, if like, let's say because by the time we're recording this, I'm sure we're going to know exactly who Khabib is going to be fighting tomorrow. But let's say that Dana White pulled a fast one and got McGregor to agree to a fight tomorrow. That'd probably be the most pay-per-view buys that the UFC has ever done. And it would probably smash that record. Okay. For McGregor, pretty much trashing the bus they were on. Throwing a dolly on there. Trying to throw a guardrail. Throwing whatever he could find. Breaking windows. Cut people. Some dude's got a broken hand, I think it is. And go to jail. Get released. And then fight Khabib on Saturday. That would be the ultimate storyline there. I mean, that would be absolutely ridiculous. But again, that's just a pipe dream, right? There. I don't even know if that's like legally able to happen. All right. But like I said, this whole week for the UFC has been a bit odd. I've enjoyed it. I've been watching it, watching it all unfold. It's been fun. I'm probably not going to buy, buy the fight tomorrow because I'm just some broke college kid. But maybe I'll find a way to watch it. Okay. Definitely. I'll fa- definitely find a way to watch it. There's no doubt about that. With all that's gone on. I mean, you have to. Maybe Conor McGregor shows up to wherever they're fighting. I think it's what? They're in New York. Maybe they're fighting at Madison Square Garden or whatever. Maybe Conor McGregor finds a way. Does the whole Bellator thing where he jumps over the fence, yelling at everyone, slaps the ref. Maybe that's what we see from McGregor this time in the UFC. Who knows? But either way, Conor McGregor legit might be a crazy person. Knows how to bring up publicity. I will give him that, okay? And you still got like, I've seen people like ESPN. ESPN never talks about the UFC ever okay but this is on the like this is front page stuff for them okay you get the masters up here on the website and then um and then it is uh ufc 223 all the mcgregor stuff and i think the fighter i just saw right now as i'm scrolling through the guy who's be fighting khabib and forgive me i'm gonna box his last name is al iaquinta i think it is it is it's gonna be a five round title fight khabib i'm sure is gonna um is gonna he's gonna win it yeah, Quinta, whatever his last name is, he's not fighting for the title because he didn't get to weigh in at 155, which, I mean, you can't even blame the guy. But nonetheless, they did fight a fighter for Khabib. So obviously, my McGregor pipe dream is done. But nonetheless, McGregor sure, like, this is probably, like, honestly, this is, I guess, bad, but it's good in the way because, I mean, this is probably the most hype, the most hype I've seen for UFC 223 so far. All right, obviously they were marketing it and promoting it, but it just it got even bigger once McGregor did this. So I mean, it's just the guy knows how to create publicity. So we'll see what goes on with McGregor. I think his next court date is June 14th. So we'll see if he gets that felony dropped. And it's just the guy's gonna be in suits and be losing a lot of money. I would not be surprised if we get a Floyd McGregor fight sometime soon. All right, or even a Khabib versus McGregor fight. Dana White's got to got to make that fight. You can't you can't sus- there's no way you can't suspend McGregor. And this is the whole thing with McGregor being bigger than the UFC here. It all comes into play. It's just you have to. Okay, you can't you cannot um 
suspend McGregor for a year or anything like that. Give him three months or whatever up until September. Have him fight then. Have him fight Khabib then. Okay? That's what needs to happen. This fight needs to be made. And I think Khabib was on that bus too, just by himself. Wasn't with his team. They were on a, in a different vehicle. But, I mean, we ha- this fight has to happen. Okay? I'm not the biggest UFC guy by any means, but I would pay for this fight. They need to make it. Dana White, do not, do not suspend McGregor just yet. And if you're going to, give him a little slap on the wrist suspension there. But anyways, that's going to wrap it up for this segment. Just wanted to give my thoughts on it all. And for the next thing, we're going to mention the Masters, talk a bit about Tigers, woeful day so far, pretty much talk about anything else going on in the world of sports, and make my picks for tonight's NBA game. So stay tuned, and we'll be right back. Are you looking for help for your fantasy football team? Check out the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast. Get today's best advice on who to start, who to sit, even who you should draft. From sleeper picks to red-hot lineups, they got it all covered for you. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash fantasy-football-podcast. We'll cover traditional leagues, dynasty, PPR, even IDP leagues. When you need fantasy help, there's just one show to hit up. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow Follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. Right, and welcome back to the GSMC Sports Podcast. I've had a lot of fun doing the show today. Let me tell you, I enjoy talking with McGregor. I enjoy talking about the Warriors. Always look fun giving my thoughts on the NBA. And then we recapped Thursday's games for the first segment, all right? But we got the Masters going on. It's day two, round two. All right, Patrick Reed is currently in first place as I'm recording this. Minus four through, uh, four under par, I should say, through 10 holes. Seven under par for counting yesterday also. So his total score, seven under par, currently in first. Rory McIlroy is his four under par, finished today. Jordan Spieth, not the best day, was in first yesterday. Two over par today, finished his day up, though. Currently four under, tied for fourth. Henrik Stenson also tied for fourth. Let's see. Ricky Fowler, let's go through the notable names. Ricky Fowler, two under, currently tied for ninth. Um, Bubba Watson, same, tied for nine, two under. DJ Singh, one under still. Let's see, where's Phil Mickelson at? All right, we got to find Phil Mickelson, we got to find Tiger, and we got to find the guy, Sergio Garcia, who had a rough day yesterday. Phil Mickelson, currently 5 over par, finished his day. 7 over par today, rough for the older guys today, let me tell you. All right, so yeah, Phil Mickelson's pretty much out of it. Tiger, currently 12 holes in as I'm recording this, 4 over, currently at 5 over par total for both days. Yeah, so how about Tiger being a favorite for the Masters, all right? Let's see, where's Sergio Garcia? He's got to at least done better today. Let's see, Sergio Garcia currently tied for, oh, he's having, I think, even, it's poor Sergio Garcia. And didn't he win it last year? I think he won it last year, so he's got to put the jacket on. Dude's not even going to make the cut. I mean, at least you get to hang out in Augusta, that little country club they got over there. But, I mean, this is rough. Sergio Garcia currently at 15 over par, 6 over for the day today, through 12 holes. Maybe he's just phoning it in. Maybe he's like, you know what, this is to have a couple of drinks. All right, the John Daly thing. I think John Daly used to smoke cigarettes during his uh, rounds. I don't know. Sergio Garcia, not the best. All right, nonetheless, he's going to have to put the jacket on him. And Tiger Woods, like I said, currently at 5 over, 4 over for the day. The projected cut, it's looking like, is at 5 over. So. Tiger, he's got a, I mean, he's got to hit a couple of birdies at least. If he makes it in at three over, I'm sure he'll make it. Like I said, the projected cuts at, cuts at five over. But it's just, come on, Tiger. And I think that we all honestly got a little bit too excited with Tiger showing that he's a little bit tiny back. And and again, this goes back to my whole question. I mean, what constitutes Tiger as being back? Does he have to go out and win a major? Does he just have to be in contention week in and week out? I mean, 
What's going on here? There's a lot of people, too, who are losing a lot of money because they put their money on Tiger since he was a favorite. Vegas was a genius there, okay? I mean, honestly, in hindsight, think about it. And Tiger Woods could make me eat my words. Again, if he ends up making the cut and ends up having the two rounds of his life on Saturday and Sunday, which I highly doubt is going to happen, so I'm just going to go ahead and spew my thoughts here. But it's just, did we really think, honestly, honestly, negate the hype, okay, think just as a golf fan. Did you honestly think that Tiger Woods was going to win the Masters? Okay. And obviously, it's very difficult to predict who's going to win what tournament or whatever. Okay. But honestly, in your mind, whoever you may be, big golf fan, John Doe. Okay. Did you honestly think that Tiger was going to go out and win? Vegas having Tiger as the favorite to win was the ultimate trap. Okay. Of course people are going to be putting their money on Tiger to win. People look at the Vegas odds just to see who's the favorite. That's how they make their decision. All right. Vegas is undefeated. Let me tell you. Okay. Tiger Woods is rough. I mean, I saw a pic- I haven't been able to watch the match today because I am a college student. I was in class earlier when he was um when he was when he was playing and I'm recording this as he's playing now. So, there was a picture that I saw the dude shooting it behind trees. Come on, Tiger. Come on. But nonetheless, I mean, if he makes the cut, we got two more days of Tiger. If he's not in contention, I guess, I mean, the ratings are going to be a little bit down. They have to be, right? There's no reason. For me, I mean, obviously, you got the diehards out there, but you got the casuals who, and they'll check in, see how Bubba Watts is doing, see how Rory's doing. Rory McIlroy is supposed to be the guy who took over for Tiger. Rory McIlroy is pretty, pretty good. He's one of the best, I guess you could say. But nonetheless, it's just when Tiger's not out there contending to win a major tournament, it's just not the same. It's not fun. It really isn't. But yeah, I just want to give my thoughts on Tiger so far. Like I said, not the best um, not the best day from him. And it's going to be tough for him to make the cut. But we'll see if good old Tiger can do it. And then Eldrick Woods. I'm not calling him Tiger until he wins a tournament. From now on, I'm going to call him Eldrick Woods. I'm almost His name is Eldrick, right? I'm not just throwing it out there. Let's see. Eldrick Woods, yeah, that's Tiger's name, Eldrick Woods, all right, and you got to be, you got to be a legend to have everyone call you Tiger regularly, like it's your real name, all right, but nonetheless, Eldrick, currently at five over, and it's not looking good right here, and again, I'm going to call him Eldrick until he wins a tournament, because I think that's just fair, all right, but see, anything else going on in the world of sports, Paul George said that wherever OKC finishes, that won't dictate his free agent decision. Sure it won't. Sure it won't. All right. Why on earth would anyone want to go play at OKC still? Honestly. Melo is done. Okay, I'm sitting on that little hill right there. Anyone wants to join me can. I just, Melo was a great scorer, but it's he's done. It's over. All right, Melo. Melo's biggest problem throughout his career was people were treating him like he's the guy you build around. No, he's the guy you add to the team for the guy you're already building around. All right. And I never noticed there was a lot of there's a lot of Melo fans out there, but I'm okay taking them head on because the fact that, like I said, I just think that's the case there. Melo was just a guy that the biggest misconception is that Melo's a guy you build around and that's just not the case. The guy you build around is, it's the Kobe. It's the LeBron. Okay, it's the Kawhi Leonard. It's the guy who is going to, who's going to make you make the players around him better. Okay? Maybe if you put a bunch of top talent around a guy like Melo, maybe it'll work. And I don't think he really ever had top talent like how these teams do now. But I mean, it was a different time five years ago for being honest here. But it's just Melo, I don't think, has these skills to be the number one guy on a team. And again, this is all open for debate. If you disagree, that's fine. All right, we got the GSMC underscore sports um, sports Twitter you could tweet at. All right, but I just, I don't, I don't think that Melo was just, we put Melo in a category where he had no business being in, okay? And that's fine. That's not a knock on Melo. All right, it's just... The guy was put in a category where he should have been another. 
He's not the guy you build around. You could probably say that around about a Chris Paul too, possibly. Chris Paul's had more playoff success, I guess. Barely, though, I guess you could say. But it's just a matter of, I mean, it is what it is. Melo, one of the great scorers, I think, we've seen. But it's just the guy was never good enough to build a team around in order for him to lead them. It's just, it is the way it is, you know? I don't know. Melo's had a weird career, but as far as Paul George goes, I think he's going to be ending up in LA. I don't, I don't see a, I don't see a scenario where he doesn't. I mean, Paul George this year has kind of knocked down his value too a bit. I feel honestly, I'd rather stick with Ingram, Kuzma, and Randall. But people are going to fight me on that too. I do have the hottest of takes as far as the NBA goes, but yeah, we'll see about it. New York put up a billboard for LeBron, says sign here. All right, let me see. They put up a little banner thing on a building. Let's see. Let me read. It's got the Knicks jersey, the back of the Knicks jersey, orange 23. James is on the back. King of New York, question mark. Prove it. Hashtag King James NYC 18. And that's the banner there. All right. Like I said, it's one of those big ones, kind of like the witness one that Cleveland has on theirs, except this one's more narrow and skinny. Really, New York? Really? Is this what we're doing here? Come on now. You guys really think you have a shot at getting LeBron? Really? Are we serious here? There's no chance. No chance whatsoever. Okay. This is one of the more out there things I've seen. Why would LeBron want to go from Dan Gilbert, who he already dislikes, to James Dolan, who is very easy to dislike from what I've seen? Go ask Charles Oakley. All right. I mean, come on now. Whoever's putting this up, yeah, good publicity. But, like, the King of New York question, that's that's what I'm smiling at right now. King of New York, like, question mark? Yeah, LeBron is the King of New York. LeBron's been the King of New York. LeBron's been the King of Cleveland. King of New York. King of Miami. Uh, no, Dwayne Wade's got that. But it's just, I don't know. It's kind of funny. You can, you can spin that, a little, like, the King of New York question a lot of ways. I mean, it's kind of like... Like, you're acknowledging that LeBron has been dominating in your city since the beginning of time. And the Knicks, I love the Knicks. All right. One day, they're going to be good again. Maybe get their Patrick Ewing, the second version of Patrick Ewing. I mean, you got that in Kristaps Porzingis and maybe continue the tradition of losing to the best player in the league in the playoffs week in and week out or year in and year out. Maybe a guy who's similar to Reggie Miller gets you a couple times. And Reggie Miller actually became one of my favorite players. I've never seen Reggie Miller play. But that 30 for 30 that ESPN put out by Reggie Miller and this little thing with the Knicks was what put me over the top as far as Reggie Miller becoming one of my favorite players. And I don't hate the Knicks, okay? If the Knicks ever got good, I would talk great about them. But it's just a matter of like Scottie Pippen dunking over Patrick Ewing, Reggie Miller playing against the Knicks, all stuff I wasn't around for, but stuff I've, got, I've been able to see. Scottie Pippen's a top five player of mine too. Favorite. I think my top five players would be Paul Pierce, Scottie Pippen, Reggie Miller, DeMarcus Cousins. And I don't know. That fifth is up for debate, I guess. So either way though, let's make my picks. Let's finish the show off and make my picks for tonight's games. Let's see how many games we got going on tonight. I think we got a few going on. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We got a lot of games. Usually pretty unusual for Friday, but I guess we are coming to the end of the regular season. So let's get into it. We got the Mavericks facing off with the Pistons first up. I got the Pistons winning this one. They're at home. Both out of the playoffs. I don't know. Maybe the Mavericks could steal one here, but I'm going to go with the Pistons there. Hornets versus the Magic. Magic know they got to lose. Hornets not really playing for much, so I got the Hornets. We got the Cavs versus the Philadelphia 76ers. I think if Philly wins this one, they are the three seed. And I'm very, very intrigued because of the fact that Philly is favored in this one. This is how Vegas throws you off. Putting Tiger as the favorite to win the Masters and having Philly at four point at minus four to beat the Cavs. I'm taking the Cavs in this one. Obviously, if Vegas thinks that the Sixers can beat the Cavs without Joel Embiid, they are just tricking everyone. I know the Cavs, Sixers, Sixers have won 10 in a row, but I got to go with the Cavs in this one. Vegas just swayed me the other way. We got the Hawks facing off with the Wizards. I got the Wizards in this one. No reason why they should lose. We got the Celtics versus the Bulls. This is going to be a tough one for Boston since they're going to be without Jason Tatum and Al Horford. I'm going to go with the Celtics in this one. Still think the Bulls are that bad. Heat versus the Knicks. Heat have a bad road record, 18-22 and 22 on the road. Knicks are 18-20 and 20 at home. All right, but I'm going to go with the Heat. 
We got the Pacers versus the Raptors. Pacers coming off of a big win against the Raptors. I'm going to go with the Pacers, or against the Warriors, I should say. I'm going to go with the Pacers. Raptors really don't have much to play for after um, now, so I'm going to go with the Pacers on that one. Then we got the Kings versus the Grizzlies. I'm going to go with Sacramento. Pelicans versus the Suns. I got the Pelicans. And then the Timberwolves versus the Lakers. Big game for the Timberwolves here. Half. This is a must win here. It's definitely a must win here, okay? Let's see. The Clipper, the... Denver's got the Clippers on the 7th, which is tomorrow. So tomorrow, the Denver's playing the Clippers. Timberwolves lose this one, and the Denver wins tomorrow. Denver's got that 8th spot. So the Timberwolves definitely have to win this one. wonder if Jimmy Butler's going to get any minutes in this one, but we'll see. So anyway, I got the Timberwolves in this one. I think I only got one upset pick tonight, and that is the Cavs over the Sixers, which sounds very weird saying. But nonetheless, I got the Pistons winning, Hornets winning, Cavs winning, Wizards winning, Celtics winning, Heat winning, Pacers winning. That's my other upset pick. So two of them. Kings winning, Pelicans winning, and the Timberwolves winning. So we'll see about it. But anyways, that's going to wrap it up for today's show. Today we talked about yesterday's NBA games. Recap those. We talked about the Warriors, the little skid they've been on. Talked about Conor McGregor, that whole situation. And we talked about the Masters. Talked about the Knicks and LeBron James a bit. And made my picks for tonight's games. So thanks for listening to the GSMC Sports Podcast. As always, I am your host, Jesse Tapia. We'll be back on Tuesday, so stay tuned, and we will talk to you later. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program